Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making Philly cheesesteak. Okay, so the first part of this video, in fact, the main part of this video is gonna be making super, super soft bread rolls, like what they might call in America hoagies, or what you could also call a very soft Italian bread. So we're using a strong white bread flour, as always. All of the quantities will be in the description below. Um, we're just gonna use half of the flour at first, and we're gonna add some warm water, packet of instant yeast, sugar, Give that a really good mix. So that's really, really loose, uh, really light. To that, we're just going to add some salt and more of the flour. So you, still, you see, I can still mix this with this spatula at this point, but as we add the last bit of flour, it's still a lot looser than a, a normal dough, but it's getting a bit of a strain. So I use this. I don't know if you, you've been supposed to use this for dough. I know that's not a proper dough hook, but it's like the attachment for my whisk. And I find that it really makes really nice dough. So um, I only put one in. And I'll just use it as if I'm stirring around, but you can feel that it kind of pulls it up and you get a really, really smooth dough. If you do have one of these attachments for your whisk, definitely use that. Uh, if you've got a KitchenAid with a dough hook, of course, just let the dough hook do all the work for you and just drop all the ingredients in. Uh, or knead it. If you're old school, knead it. But the problem with this is you don't want to add too much flour. And if you knead a dough that is this wet, it's really going to totally stick to the work surface. So... To be honest, it's going to take probably a little bit of hard work, a bit of elbow grease, or as I'm doing, just use uh, this electric device. You see now at this point, we've added the rest of the flour. Just making sure we scrape any excess off the outside of the bowl, just so it can all combine. water warm water again just to loosen it so at this point we're doing we're adding water not in measurements just in kind of splashes or enough to keep loosening up that uh, that dough Now we're gonna add some softened butter, half of the butter. And again, using this attachment, this is why I know this attachment works, you see, because I don't know if you'll spot this on a video, because I do speed it up slightly, but there, once you see that it catches onto the butter, you can see that it, I don't know what the word is, almost like it drills it down into whatever it is you're whisking um, or mixing. And it just combines really, really smoothly. So listen, do, do what works for you. If you are just using a wooden spoon at this point, I'd probably like totally soften that butter. So it was almost like, melted like liquid otherwise it's going to be so much hard work for you but you can see using this or if you were using a dough hook on a kitchen aid you'd see just how smooth the uh, the dough becomes now we add the remainder of the butter and of course we're just going to do the same again and mix that uh, whilst i'm doing this i've not asked this for a few videos but if you like my videos it really helps me if you hit like at the bottom and also if you're not subscribed to me if you just click the subscribe button i do three of these videos a week you don't have to do it if you do do it it's completely free um but it just helps me out big time so uh yeah, thank you in advance if you do choose to do that. There's our dough, which we're going to cover in uh, cling film and then leave to prove this had had about an hour. And you can see how much that's, uh, that's, that's obviously the yeast and everything, that that's just like more than doubled in size. With floured hands, we're going to just knock the air out of it, which is where we're literally just going to pull it away, bring it back into the middle again. This is really kind of, not the stickiest dough in the world, but it's, uh, you can see that it's still 
you know, quite a loose, quite a sticky dough. Flour, a work surface, to me that's a lightly floured work surface. You don't want to have too much flour. It's really, really easy to over flour a work surface just to guarantee that your, your dough won't stick to it. But just add just enough to make sure that this, uh, this can be moved around. For the purpose of this, chops it in half. Chops it in half again so I know that I've got like four even pieces. Use a fairly blunt knife if you're going to do that because don't worry, it's only obviously dough. Uh, form these pieces. I formed uh, two of them into kind of hoagies or, or long rolls and then the rest I just made into little bread rolls which were really, really nice but you won't see them on this video. You're just going to have to take my word for it, aren't you? So they go onto a parchment uh, line tray. There's one of my bread rolls and there's two. So I'm just going to cover those with a clean tea towel. Let them rise again for this time about 45 minutes. Just want them to puff up, puff up ever so slightly. Uh, I just put a slit down the back. You want to use your sharpest knife if you are going to do that. Um, and we're going to make a wash for the top. So this type of wash is more for a soft roll. So we just want the egg white. So we separate an egg like you've seen us done countless times. Um, so we've got the egg white there. And to the egg white, we're just going to add some whole milk and whisk that. So that's going to be the wash that we use for a soft, a soft bread roll. It's going to give it a tiny, tiny bit of colour. Uh, sorry, it's going to give it like a tiny, tiny bit of a crust, but some colour as well. So we're just going to spread that on top. And then into the oven, these go for about half an hour. There they are smell amazing relax don't cut into them until they're cold these have cooled these have been like a, these have cooled for about an hour if you start cutting into them first then they're just going to kind of go to mush because it's going to be like a hot dough but you'll see as we slice into them just how absolutely perfect they are oh it's quite difficult to see on camera how soft they are but they are super super soft smelling amazing this is the steak that we use for our philly cheesesteak and it is a ribeye put your ribeye steaks in the freezer for about 40 minutes uh, you don't want them frozen solid, but you want them nice and easy to slice because we want to cut them as thin as we can. Unless you've got an, uh, a proper meat slicer and you're just going to use a knife, yeah, I would strongly advise that you put them in a the freezer first. Don't freeze them solid, just get them cold enough so that you can cut them into lovely little thin strips like this. So there's all the ribeye steak. And we're also going to use some onion. So this is a sweet white onion, which we're just going to chop off the top, chop through the root white we seem to do in every single video. That's going to stop us crying. Peel off the skin. And this time we're just going to very roughly chop these. So we're just going to put four chops in the one way, turn them sideways on, chop them again. And that's going to produce these lovely, lovely little thin, um, like textured slices of onion we're not making minced onion or finely chopped onion but there you go so there's all your onion okay now into a pan on a medium heat with just a little bit of olive oil and a small knob of butter we're going to put our onions and we're going to cook these really slowly just until they get a little bit of color on them just until they catch uh, see like that we could just keep cooking those down. They'd get darker and darker, but they just get sweeter and sweeter. But that's as much colour as we want. We want the edge totally taken off them. Uh, we still want them to. We want them to be lovely and caramelised, but we don't want them to have burnt or to have gone crispy. Okay, now into a pan some ground nut oil. We want this pan at a scary heat, as hot as you can get it, and then drop in your ribeye steak pieces. We want these to cook quickly. So I've just left those there. I don't want to play with it too much. I want them to just separate slightly. We're just going to move them around the pan. We don't want to keep over moving them because we want the uh, pieces of steak to kind of catch on the bottom of the pan. Uh, and when they do that on, on a pan as hot as this, then they're going to get that lovely color on them as well. So we're just going to add some seasoning, some salt and some black pepper. I'm going to be fairly quick with this stage because like I say, you just don't want to overdo the, uh, the steak at all. Um, but as I mentioned before, you are just looking to get a bit of a colour on them. See, like on that, you've got that lovely kind of uh, darker crust. The meat inside is still going to be super soft and tender. Almost cooking this in real time. There's a couple of bits where I've cut, ever, cut slightly, but really you want to be cooking this for 
maybe two minutes max. In goes the onions. And I'm just going to mix those onions around, mix them in with the meat. They're already cooked, of course, don't forget. This is really just reheating them and letting some of that onion flavour go into the, uh, into the ribeye steak. And that's about done. So you can see that's all absolutely beautiful. I'm going to take that off the heat. Here's our soft roll, which we're just going to lightly toast only on the inside. So open it up slightly and toast it. And I add here some Edam cheese in America or in Philadelphia, they'd use like provolone cheese. Uh, Edam's probably the closest we've got here. Uh, so I put two slices on the what's going to be the top and one slice that's going to be on the bottom, if that makes any sense at all. But basically there's all that lovely soft cheese to which now we're going to add our amazing steak and onion mixture. Fold over the top, soft, amazing, mild, but kind of chewy cheese. Uh, eat that on your own if you want, of course. I shared mine with the, uh, the wife, so we chopped it in half. But that is a Philly cheesesteak. Very difficult for me to tell you how soft that bread is, but that bread is absolutely soft and gorgeous. That's ribeye steak, which is beautifully cooked and perfectly seasoned with that sweet onion, the soft cheese, amazing. Really, really fantastic sandwich. One of my favorites. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you make this yourself at home. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one.